we are supposed to achieve a maximally flexible system. So once again, this is the big difference between Chainlink and Oracle networks in general and blockchains, in my opinion. Blockchains do not seek to be maximally flexible, right? They say, here's my block size. Here's the transaction types you can you you can put in those blocks. Here's the contract language I have. Here's here's kind of my blockchain system, right? Here's the here's the fee structure for those blocks. They're going to keep getting you know kind of composed. Transactions are going to get put into blocks. Blocks will get connected, and and it'll continue, right? And that's a very focused type of system, and that's great, and that makes sense because it's focused on creating security for that category of on-chain activity which is once again a critical, critical part of building a highly transparent system and something that Chainlink enables and you know doesn't compete with and just enables to do more. Oracle networks, conversely, have to interact with all the world's data and provide all the services that blockchains don't provide, right? So there's kind of a spectrum. On one end of the spectrum, you have blockchains that are highly secure, highly reliable, highly tamper-proof, highly transparent, are not very feature rich. For example, they cannot talk to an API. Many of them can't generate randomness. They cannot do some kind of privacy co pr preserving computation. So they're very secure and they're these kind of data structures and smart contract platforms to hold on-chain code that can define conditions, receive value, pay ba value back out under conditions and create transparency around all that, which makes perfect sense. And then there's oracles and oracle networks. That is all the world's data, right? We're talking about taking all the world's data and making it consumable for all the world's use cases that have trust issues. So the amount of variability there is absolutely massive. 